This tutorial is for the beginner to music production, and we are going to be talking about what an envelope is and um, how that works in tandem with ADSR. So the main concept to understand about the envelope is that it relates to the characteristics of a sound over a period of time. The most basic characteristics that you could be working with when using an envelope could be that sound's volume or amplitude, its timbre, and its pitch. Now if we're working with the sound's volume, then we'd be using a volume envelope or amp envelope. If we're working with the sound's timbre or the color, so to speak, of the sound, then we're working with the filter envelope. And if we're working with the sound's pitch, then this would be using the pitch envelope. So let's take a look at all of this in action. We'll start with taking a look at Mai Tai, which is a virtual analog synth within Studio One. And part of the reason why I'm using the synth is because we have three separate envelopes available to us and each of them provides a visual display so we'll be able to see exactly what's going on with our envelope as we make adjustments. And we'll first cover how we can use the envelope to control our amplitude or volume over a period of time. Uh, in our display here, the vertical edge here is going to represent our volume or amplitude and the horizontal border down at the bottom is going to represent the passage of time. And we can see that this is actually permanently tied to the volume or level as labeled with this amp envelope. And then at the very bottom here we can see our ADSR, Attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release. And this rectangular box right now is going to represent our envelope and give us a visual display of the adjustments that we're making to it. And it will make a bit more sense in just a moment. Okay, so if I come up to the presets area, I'm just gonna click on the initialize and be sure that this is initialized. I actually wanna double check the, I wanna be sure that there's nothing else going on in the mod matrix here. So I'm going to disable these and just control click. Okay, we're all clear there. I'm going to close that out for the time being. And this is our initialized patch. So if I quickly press and release, that's the sound that we're gonna have. If I press and hold, and then release. So I just wanted you guys to have a basic starting point of how our sound is uh, going to be played back by different triggering methods in where we are at this baseline setting for our ADSR and our envelope. And so we'll start from the left and talk about the attack. Now the attack, as I mentioned earlier, is going to control the amount of time it takes for our audio or our sound to reach its full amplitude. So right now it's set all the way to the left, so we have an immediate attack, which is why our sound plays back in that way. Now as I grab, hold, and pull this to the right, with this particular display, we actually have a readout where we can see the time in seconds. Right here we are at 101 milliseconds. This is 300 milliseconds. And if I keep going, I'm gonna push this back pretty far so we can make this very obvious to about three seconds here. So now our attack time is three seconds long. So you'll hear that our sound will now gradually be introduced to our full amplitude. Now our decay is set to zero milliseconds, so there is no decay, we're just going straight into our sustain. And our sustain is actually set to zero dB, so that's why we go straight up to full amplitude and maintain that volume throughout. Now if I were to take the sustain which doesn't have anything to do with time, it's only adjusting our level when we're using this in the amp amp envelope. If I take this sustain down, we can see again in that readout that pops up here. Let's take this down pretty far to make it very obvious. We'll go down to minus 12 dB. Now let's see what happens with that. We're going to rise up slowly and then have a quick drop in volume. Okay, so 
we have that quick drop because our decay is not turned up. But if I were to increase this a bit, again, we're going with longer times to make this very obvious. So we'll take that up to two seconds. And you can see that our time display updates down below to show how the time is working in tandem with our envelope. And I think this is four seconds here. I'm kind of far from the screen. Um, but these are compounded, so our attack is two, is almost three seconds. Our decay is two seconds. So we've got about five seconds between those two. And again, sustain is nothing to do with time. So let's Okay, and then as I release, you can see the release down here. We have an immediate stop of our sound, and that's because our release time is down to zero milliseconds. And again, we can just click, hold, and drag to increase that out. We, paying attention to that uh, release display, we're at 682 milliseconds there, 1.14 seconds. Let's take this up. Um, again to a higher setting of almost three seconds there. So now we'll have our nearly three second attack going up to our uh, peak volume. Then we'll have a two second decay down to our sustain level, which is minus 12 dB. And then once we release the key, we're going to have a three second decline to silence. So let's go ahead and trigger this and hear how that sounds. Now I'm going to release. Okay, and then there was our three second release time. So this should be pretty clear in how that works here. So if, if I pull back to the left on our attack, decrease our decay time and increase our sustain level a bit here. And our release time, take that down a bit. So now we understand what's going on with our amp envelope and we've seen how our amp or volume envelope works to control the audio level of our sound over time. What if we'd like to control the timbre or color of our sound? For this we can actually direct envelope 2 here to uh, control our filter cutoff which is here. So depending on what VST you're using or device you're using, the way that you're going to go about this is going to be a bit different. Some synthesizers already have these uh, linked together just as our amp envelope is automatically linked to our uh, volume level. But here within my tie, we make that adjustment manually. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the mod matrix, come to this first section here. And then what we want to do is choose envelope two. And then we want to send that to the filter cutoff here. So I'm going to click on the bottom area. And then we have filter cutoff. So now we have connected this envelope to the cutoff of our filter. And in this way, we can then use the envelope to adjust the color or timbre of our sound and make those adjustments over a period of time. As we saw up above, the horizontal border at the bottom has to do with time, the vertical one. In this instance, doesn't have to do with volume. Well, it, it has to do with an attenuation or boosting of frequencies. So it, you could say that it still does have to do with volume in a certain way. But one important thing to remember here is that when we're working in these synths and other VSTs, our envelope is going to dictate when things happen over time, how they actually happen, happen meaning what frequencies are cut and by how much or which are boosted, uh, will typically be controlled by a couple other settings. So within my tie, we have this level bar here. 
So as I move to the left, this is just a bipolar parameter here. So as I move to the left, then we will cut frequencies over time within our envelope too. If I move to the right, then we're going to boost over time. And whatever I set my filter at the cutoff initially, it I mean, it doesn't really matter. This is not going to change that initial beginning. Uh, it's really going to just ad adjust how the filter cutoff performs as we play back our sound. So let me just go ahead and what do I want to do here? We'll take the, I'm going to control click to just disengage that so we have no effect of our envelope tube on our filter cutoff at this moment. I'm just going to play back. And you can see how that, or hear how that cutoff is affecting our audio. So what we want to do is have the envelope control that automatically so that we don't have to grab this. So I'm actually going to take that cutoff down to about there and say I wanted to open up a bit and let some of those higher frequencies and brightness come back in after a certain period of time. So now that we've directed envelope two to our filter cutoff, we would want to move this to the right. You know, if you have a VST, it may be a knob that you turn to the right. It may be a button that you press to invert uh, up or down, but you'll get the general idea here. So I'm going to move this to the right. And now we have our attack, decay, sustain, and release. And instead of adjusting the volume or the volume level or amplitude of our sound, we're going to be controlling when this filter cutoff adjustment is introduced. So if I come to the attack, let's take this up as we did above and make this very obvious with a 5.2 second or 5.26 second introduction to that uh, filter increase. And if I go ahead and shorten that, So you can hear those higher frequencies being introduced. If I come and move this up a little bit, even more to the right, all the way, in fact, we should hear even more significant uh, difference. Now I could even take this cutoff down lower for an even dr more dramatic effect. Okay, so I can make that happen a bit quicker by taking the attack time down. Let's decrease our decay time. That was way up there. Let's take it down to, say, about three seconds. Now, if I take the sustain up, So we can see how this is behaving differently, as I mentioned earlier. Now, when we increase the sustain with the envelope and working with the filter, for instance, instead of adjusting the uh, level of our audio signal, as we can see there, that's on minus 4.5 dB, coming to the sustain here, we still see minus 3.2 dB. but we are cutting those frequencies. And then the lower that we cut this, we're going to this initial setting that we have here at our very beginning. So if I push the uh, attack time out, you can hear that initial cutoff. And we go back to that initial cutoff when we have the sustain set to zero dB. Now, if I were to increase the cutoff from the very beginning here, 
let's take our attack time back a little bit to about two seconds. And then let's change the, or invert, change the direction of our setting down below here within the mod matrix, and then play back. So we can see that we open up with our brightness because our cutoff is turned all the way up. And then we, since we inverted that, we're now cutting out those frequencies based on how we have our uh, envelope set here. So if I even increase the attack time, now our, our decay and sustain bring those back up. So if I increase the decay, let me take the attack time down a little bit. Okay, and then as you can imagine, if I were to take the sustain up, then we're going to lose our audio because we're staying at that cutoff that we've set down below there. If I go ahead and drop that back down. And it seems a little confusing because we're pulling down, but we're bringing back the frequencies. And that's just because we've, you know, we've went into the negative here within the setting in our mod matrix. Okay, and so we also do have release available to us there. I'm actually going to switch this and invert that. Let's take the attack time to be... We actually need to take that cutoff down. Okay, and so now we will move on to envelope three. I'm gonna go ahead and just click there to disengage the settings for envelope two. And then we're going to finish up talking about the pitch envelope. So again, this is a generic envelope that we can assign to anything. And we can just come down to the bottom here as we did with the filter. And then what I wanna do is choose envelope three and then direct that to oscillator one pitch because we're working with oscillator one, that's the only one that we have active. This is basically our pitch here. And so we should have, let me reset the amp envelope and take the cutoff up. Now we're pretty much back to how we were when we first started off with the initialized patch. But we now have our envelope three directed to the oscillator one pitch. And so again, just know this is gonna allow us to control how the, the pitch now behaves over a period of time. The time being the horizontal border at the bottom and the pitch being the vertical border at the top. So we need to again, move this forward a bit. Actually, I'm gonna go to the negative and drop the pitch over time, take that down nearly to the bottom and then I'm going to introduce a gradual attack let's bring that up to say 3 seconds and let's see how this sounds right now okay so that makes sense, right? Because we that drop took about three seconds and then our decay is set to zero. Our sustain is set to uh, zero dB, which is why it maintained that lower pitch at the end. So I'll shorten this just a little bit to 2.3 seconds. Okay, now if I increase the decay time, that's at 2.25 seconds. If 
if I decrease the sus sustain, we should go back to our original pitch there. So now we should just go down and then right back up, just as it's, vi as it's visualized right here. And again, it seems a little confusing because this is going up and we're going down, but that's just because we have inverted the signal here into the negative. If I move this bar to the right, then it's going to look a bit more representative of what's going on here. And again, if I move the sustain back up, we're just going to keep that higher pitch throughout. Now what if we brought back in our envelope 2, which is uh, manipulating the filter. Okay, so that pretty much covers the uh, working with envelopes and understanding the ADSR. I hope that, you know, I've kind of been tweaking a lot here and moving a bit slowly just so that if you're watching this and you're a beginner, you can have a really good understanding of how these work because it's really going to play a solid foundation in the creation of uh, good music and having helping you to get your ideas out. Now you can pretty much stop watching here, but I am going to take a second and just look at using a sampler and how the envelope and ADSR are going to allow us to have more control of working with our samples. So here I have a sample one, and if I go ahead and then play back. So this is our sample that we have loaded in here. Now you can see that we have a uh, pitch, filter, and amp. And then for each of these sections, we have ADSR control. So I wanted to show this so that you can see that even though we were using a synthesizer, a virtual analog synth synthesizer, the uh, concepts that we were talking about still apply to other devices, other VSTs. So if we wanted to adjust the pitch over a period of time using the ADSR, then in this sense, it, it's going to work a little bit differently, but we need to tell the pitch section here that it needs to look, attention, look at or pay attention to the envelope here or the ADSR controls. And then again, we have a uh, bipolar control. So if I move to the right, then we're going to pitch up. If I move to the right like this, we're going to pitch up. If I move to the left, then we're going to pitch down. The same goes for these other areas here. So the filter, if I move to the right, we're going to uh, 
allow higher frequencies to come in. If I move to the left, then we're going to cut or, or attenuate frequencies. Now, uh, the amp, with this, we basically are just going to be boosting. But let's come back to the pitch, and we want the pitch to rise just a little bit. And the attack time, with sample one, we don't have a readout within the device itself, but if we look in the upper right-hand corner there, we can see 0.0, .0 milliseconds. And then as I drag, looking at that corner, we can see the time that we are adjusting there. So I'm going to take that up as we were doing in my tie to about three seconds. And we've chose to increase the pitch. I'm going to go ahead and play back and we can see how that behaves. I'm going to increase that to make it more obvious. Okay, now this is not going back to its original pitch because, again, our sustain is turned all the way up uh, 0 dB, you can see there after I clicked on it. And, you know, with the pitch, it's not the volume that we're adjusting here with the sustain, but if I were to take this down a bit, that increase is eventually going to go back to our original pitch. So I'll go ahead and play back so we can hear that. I'll do that one more time. Okay, and so that's just because we took the sustain down, the sustain down, and we can then also use the decay to determine how quick we or slowly we drop back down to our original signal signal here. So we can see that we can apply the same concepts that we learned to any pretty much any device. If we come to the filter here. Now, say we want to cut frequencies. So I'm going to come to the envelope area and then move this to the left. And we want our attack to be gradual to make this obvious as we've been doing throughout. So again, looking up above there, let's make this to 4.5 seconds. That should be fine. We're going to start with all of our frequencies here. And then after about five seconds, we should cut. And actually, we are on a high pass filter, so I'm going to actually change that to low pass. And I'm, I'm going to make this even more drastic for our cut. So we're pretty much stripping away all of those high frequencies when we move all the way to the left with our envelope there. And again, you can hear how our setting here, which is 5.3 seconds, uh, basically made a gradual reduction of those frequencies. Now, if I were to change this back to the high pass filter and then change our cutoff here, and then we can hear how we're cutting all the lower frequencies out. For that high pass filter. So if you have any other questions about uh, ADSR or using envelopes, just leave a question or a comment in the comment below or the comment section below. And I will see you in the next tutorial.